if you look at uh, my athletic uh, background, I really push myself. I like to push myself, right? I finished like marathon, 70 marathons, and then I finished last year, I finished an Ironman. Wow, congrats. Um, so I like to really challenge myself. So I know I don't like to just get golden handcuff and stay somewhere forever because I need, I want growth. Mm -hmm. In the very beginning, I was very clear. Growth is always my number one goal. And the best way to grow is to get yourself in a, a little bit uncomfortable situation. And I know that going into, first of all, it's like mission driven, very alignment. That's the two things I, I, I look at. Welcome to 99 Humans. My name is Jeff LaCusta, curious coach and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, striving to understand how little things generate big impact. And I'm Nadia Carta, tech executive and lifestyle coach with a mission to transform lives and corporations by kindling hearts to generate a zeal for life. Each week, we investigate stories about the human side of leadership to re-energize your spirit and help you become a stronger leader. Because the reality is that leadership is messy, goofy, challenging, but always human. Thanks for spending time with us today. Let's dive in. Hello, Annika. Welcome to 99 Humans. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Jeff. Happy Friday. Thanks for having me. Yes, indeed. Where does this podcast find you in the world today? I'm in the best city in the world, New York City. <laughs> All right. Well, an Atlantan here might, you know, have some beef with that, but I love I it. It looks like a that. very New York view behind you, I'll say. Well, that's very intentional, for real. I'm representing New York. That's awesome. Um, how long have you lived there? Um, about 18 years. I came here with two suitcases from Taiwan, and I came here as a student. I went to NYU for my master's degree. The reason I only picked the school in New York City, only New York City, okay? There are like hundreds of schools in America because of the sex and the city. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to look like Carrie Branshaw, you know, living in a brownstone and shopping $500 of shoes. Nothing like that. I don't know. There's a brownstone out your window there. So at least from, you know, a few minutes, you're you're living the dream. I can stare at a brownstone. Yes. <laughs> One step closer. Look at the people living, you know, the sex in the city exactly. life. There you go. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Annika, um, 99 Humans is all about connecting with amazing leaders, uh, people who are out kind of living the dream in many ways from a resume and a LinkedIn perspective. And the beauty of these conversations is we do get to go behind the scenes and see what it's really like. Um, and you have quite an amazing resume. Uh, you have been a leader at a number of different companies. And I've, I'd love to just start. What are you up to right now? Yeah, so I recently uh, joined a very mission-driven staff company called Nagish. And our mission is to uh, bring accessibility to the world. Uh, we, our product is an app, mobile app for deaf user and hard of hearing user. So we utilize AI technology, technology to transcribe voice to text and text to voice. So that enables, you know, people who have trouble hearing or deaf people can communicate with anyone over the phone and have their own privacy too. And so you're the head of growth for a startup a technology company here. Yeah. This is not an easy job. You've been there for about four months. Um, tell me about the decision-making process to take a leap and go be a leader at a company like this. Yeah. So um, I might if you look at my LinkedIn, I pretty much spend a lot of time in fintech. And I know fintech very well, uh, from banking to credit card to insurance. So this is uh, very unfamiliar to me. First of all, this audience, uh, personally, uh, I don't have any friends who are hard of hearing or deaf user. So um, deaf. So 
it's very unfamiliar and also um, it's not a finance so for me i always like to seek challenge uh, to assess like to grow to grow myself to the next level and one way to grow is okay you are actually expanding to somewhere some place uncomfortable mm. and to see if you can uh, continue to um, to you know excel in a very different situation that's the reason wow. I, I kind of take the leap in just five minutes it's clear that this is a thread in your life and I'm wondering if I'm if I'm right on this do you see the same thing 18 years ago you arrived in New York City with two suitcases uh, what a growth opportunity. Now you're talking about making intentional career decisions focused on continuing that growth. Yeah. So when I uh, set my foot in New York, I told myself, I'm going to try very hard to stay. That's it. That's only one way ticket. And then just to stay. How, how uh, much is that still pushing you? Um, I would say it still um, be part of the force um, pushing me. So obviously coming from Taiwan and then, you know, from a very average family, not even, you know, it's actually like my mom worked in a factory. So she actually did not, didn't have any means to support me to come here because coming to uh, America is very expensive as a foreign student. I was very lucky that when I got my first job in Taiwan, um, the company went public. It's a startup company. And I just tell my mom, bye, I'm going to New York. And because it's my money, so my mom cannot have any say. And I make my own decision. And she say, that's still the best decision you ever made. Wow. And then I say, yeah, I know. I actually, it's good not to listen to you sometimes. <laughs> Everybody reaches that point where you you make your own decisions, not always, you know, popular from your parents, but then looking back, they're the ones that make all the difference. But Annika, you described that moment, you know, with a smile and a laugh and with such confidence. Were you as confident as you sound now in that decision or or what other things were you feeling in that decision? Uh, I would say, you know, when you were young and naive, it's actually, it liberates you, right? Mm -hmm. So I was very happy. I actually made the decision because at the time I had a really, really close boyfriend. And then, you know, they would consider me as a, like already a daughter-in-law, right? Mm -hmm. And then I actually make the decision that, hey, I really wanted to go to uh, New York to give myself a shot. I'm sorry, I cannot do this. So we we had to uh, break up. And so it was kind of difficult for me to actually make that decision. But I was just so clear for some reason, I need to come here. And then um, actually after I came here for five years, um, my mom told me on the phone, like casually, like, hey, when you were born, we took you to a fortune teller. And he told me that, it's better you are not in Taiwan. I say, mom, you know, wow. you know, so it's like so weird. The universe is play. It's, 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 it's planning the path for me for very interesting way. Right. Like mm -hmm. I told you in the very beginning, like my mom is a factory worker and she couldn't have support me. And I always want to come. So she was like, you're crazy. We don't have money to send you to America. And then all of a sudden, that opportunity came. I said, I have to go. I'm sorry. I have to break, break up with you. Uh, find another woman. They are better than me. Bye. <laughs> You're describing in a, in a funny way, I think a lot of people's dream. And by that, I mean having clarity on the decisions that we make. Yeah. I find that personally to be really difficult. I can go back and forth and waffle and pro con list and all of that to death basically, and still come out the other end of sort of a tortuous, torturous decision-making process unclear. Mm -hmm. And I can see just in the, the, the 
grace and the lightness that you tell these life altering decisions, including what companies you're going to work for. As you said, you've been a leader at a number of different companies. Do you always have that sense of clarity when you make decisions? And how do you go through a process? What's your process to get clear? Yeah, so it's really going back to what I really want, right? Because if you don't what you want, then it's hard to kind of see see what direction you need to go and what decision you need to make. How do you know what you want? That sounds silly, maybe, but I think there's so many folks like me, maybe, who are out there going, yeah, okay, but what do I want from life? So if you kind of look at uh, my athletic uh, background, I really um, push myself. I like to push myself, right? So I, I finished like marathons, 70 marathons, and then I finished last year, I finished an Ironman. Wow, um, so I like to really challenge myself. So I know I don't like to just, you know, get golden handcuff and stay somewhere forever because I need, I want growth. Mm. Like in the very beginning, I was very clear. Growth is always my number one goal, right? And the best way to grow is to get yourself in a, like a little bit uncomfortable situation. And I know that going into, first of all, it's like mission driven, very alignment. That's the two things I, I, I look at, right? When I decide to join this company. And when I make the decision, I know that it's actually kind of also a little bit scary in the beginning because I know because the audience is very niche. It's not like the, anyone can download a finance app. Anyone can invest, right? This is very special to only a specific audience. Mm -hmm. And that made me kind of scared. Like, can I really grow the company? But I say, I believe in myself based on so and so and so my experience, right? And I think that mostly the experience and the skill set, my network, I'm going to make it work. Mm -hmm. So that's how, like, coming back to your question, right? I know I want growth. So I know that I can tolerate discomfort situation, uncomfortable situation, and then I make my decision. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you're not growing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell me about one. So, you know, um, sometime at a you know certain job and then you just feel like it has been a long time. Like, you know, when I came here... Um, I, after I graduated, I actually um, work uh, for a brokerage company on Wall Street. And I worked for the company for seven years. And it was a very, very long time. Um, I felt like I got stuck. Everything just feel the same mundane every day. And I feel scared. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do, right? It just feels the same I don't I didn't grow at all for like after I would say three years everything just routine and I decided to took a trip to Europe on my own I was never been to Europe um, I decided to go to Europe for a month backpacking and then um, just first time in Europe and then with a backpack and then just travel around Europe by myself uh, I came back and then I just like okay I'm going to leave the company as soon as I can. Wow. So um, I just wanted to um, get more skills. That's how I can leave my company because I couldn't quit because I need paycheck, right? So I just study all the certification from Google. And then I luckily, after like 50th interview with agencies, I got a shot from a small agency. They took me in. And that started my agency journey. I went to join a different agency. So that made me grow so much more in two and a half years. And then I joined Stash, which is another like really great stock company. They are unicorn uh, stock company nowadays. And then, you know, that's, that's my path. You are a powerhouse, clearly. And this moment that you're describing, I can really relate to. And it reminds me, there's a book called Pivot that I really like by Jenny Blake. And it describes these 
career pivot moments that everybody experienced. We all experience lots of them. But if you don't know to look out for them, that can be very discerning. And the words you used were, life was feeling mundane. I was actually scared. Is nothing going to change? And then you have this European backpacking trip. But what what do you think? I know there's always something that maybe is, is, is you know, a little mystical, maybe, let's say. But what do you think it was about that trip that kicked you into gear and gave you the clarity to come back home and, and make a decision and do something? So I think there's another factor. One, one, one thing is that trip, right? That trip, because I told myself before the trip, I say, this is one, it's a gift to myself. It's a very expensive trip. Even like I try to be so, I stay at Airbnb and cook most of the time, too expensive, right? I say to myself, this is a time to test your courage. I'm putting myself in a very discomfort situation. First time in Europe, backpacking, um, female by myself. It's scary, right? Yeah. And the second thing is, um, that's the reason like, I think the trip just like, okay, I came back in one piece. Nothing happened. I, I can't do anything. That's a, one thing. A second thing I didn't mention is I wasn't athletic at all um, before 2011. Uh, I think being um, athlete, being like running a lot, and then, you know, being in a sport, that also changed me. Um, I would say it makes me a stronger person and mentally and physically stronger and healthier as well. So I kind of pray for growth for some reason. It's like the sports just push you. And we all, my coach and Nike always say, it's about running, but it's not about running. It's actually more about life. I think these are really powerful lessons. I love the way you lay them out just to kind of repeat them back. This experience really changed your mindset into I can do anything. Yeah. You know, like I can do hard things. Yes, it might be hard to leave this comfortable job, but I'm mon it's mundane. I'm scared. I don't want that. anymore. so I can do it. And then the sport also contributing to that same mindset. I can do hard things but also a physical, like an actual biological, giving you the energy, giving you the, you know, and, and those two things combined have been a little bit of a magic sauce for you to keep the motivation, stay focused on growth and continue to make intentional decisions throughout your career in life that are oriented on your values rather than sitting for too, too long. And two years is a long time. I just left a company after being there 12, 13 years. So wow. I can relate to these feelings. Um, you know, it, it, it is a very scary decision to do yeah. something. Yeah. And yet I see you being so thankful for having made that decision. Oh, for sure. Like 100%. Um, I, I couldn't imagine my life. Like I still actually stay in touch with, you know, some of colleagues. Um, they still work at the same company. And I kind of feel a little bit, um, you know, a little bit sad for them because nothing has changed. It's still the same. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that that's, uh, I don't know, is that right for some folks? Or do you think everybody, if, if given the mindset and the physical boost, might make similar decisions to maybe do lots of different things? I would say um, it's really personal. So I had a really close friend, my colleagues that we work together. And when I decide to jump, jump the ship and I keep encourage him, like keep trying to help him to move, he couldn't. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he is still there. And so it's really personal, like for me, it's so easy one one after right you see my linkedin I, i've been to different company every time when i join a company i feel more confident I, even i left the company with even more confident but now because the the colleagues just still in the same situation he become very not, not confident at all i i think you're a hundred percent right and it's really interesting how a lot of people struggle with this sort of personalized nature of that journey. 
Yeah. And I, I think of it just as simple as FOMO. You know, some, someone leaves the company that you're at. I think it's pretty natural. I always go, oh, that's so cool. Why am I not doing that? Why am I not? And there's so many reasons to doubt your own decisions. So much. But having that clarity mm -hmm. of who you are seems to be a difference maker for you because yeah. then you can feel good about the decisions you're making either to stay or to go mm -hmm. just by sort of coming back to what matters to you instead of looking at other people always jealous, grass is always greener sort of thing. For sure. Yes. So you said something really interesting before we hit the record button, actually. Yeah. And you said that you never feel messy in your life because we're all about on 99 Humans, you know, let's hear the messy stories. And I'd love to unpack that. Tell me what you mean. You never feel messy. Um, I, I like the... Um being in the leadership position, uh, especially when I see that the entire team is actually very motivated. You can see, you can see that they actually wanted to bring the best version of themselves to work. And you can see the excitement. You, you can see they put their work, the detail, right? But it's not like so easy to come immediately to that place. So I do have my um, approach to take myself to that, take the team and myself to that place. So I can share my approach. I hope that will be val valuable. Yes, please. Get us out of the mess here, Annika. Cool. Okay, cool. So um, I always, when I join a new company, I always look at their company values because that's a number one guiding principle for me. Um, so if I look at the value and I will also continue to tell the team that, hey, these are the guiding principles that I want me, myself and the team to follow. Any, any decision, anything you have conflict, look at principle, look at this value. This is number one thing, like value. And the number two thing is alignment. Because I, I, if the reason, here's the thing, right? One thing why you feel messy is disalignment. When mm. you, like, the team and you and your team member or you and your manager, you disalign. Things Can you, you give messy. me an example of that? Like, what, what, is, what <laughs> might disalignment look like? Yeah, so, like, looking at uh, contribution, right? That's a very easy to kind of disalign, right? Like, I feel I work so much. But how come you don't see uh, my value? Yes. That's actually very messy. <laughs> Absolutely messy. And, and okay, so that's sort of the disalignment that, that right. you're describing. Right, right. So what I want to bring is another um, step is clarity. Clarity, right? Why you feel messy? Things are unclear. Mm. So you feel messy. So I want to set what we are looking at very clearly up from. So why I'm working so hard, but you don't see my value. Is First, this a mission statement, a value? How do you state clearly what we're doing? Right, so we have a company KPIs, right? That's very important to kind of see what you do contribute to the KPIs, Okay. right? So I want to tell the team, this is how we evaluate our work, right? So anything your work is not really al like aligned with the KPIs, we probably have to deprioritize. If you don't, then if you put things that are not really on a priority of contributing to KPI, it's very unlikely I am seeing the value the work is valuable to the company. As a leader, do you always find those KPIs to be obvious or is it sometimes more of an art than a science to find out what the key performance indicators should even be? So before uh, we announce to the team, I always work with the, with the leadership to make it super clear because it's hard to... Um, make a very unclear goal to people like uh let's make the mobile more accessible 
to yeah. everyone. The, the app more accessible to everyone. What, okay, what's your great. Device? Right. <laughs> so I say, okay, let's let's make it super clear, right? What do you mean? Do you mean by like if we acquire this many new customer, if they make the phone call for this many minutes, do you mean that if we hit that number, do you think that's the more accessible to everyone, right? So that's the number one thing is I make it measurable, it's clear. So everyone in the company, we will announce the goal to the company. This is what we want to hit in 2024. And then it drill down to every department, right? Um, the product team has to work on this goal to drive more phone call to drive um, less friction on the sign up, right? And the cost acquisition um, marketing growth team, that's my team, right? We have to make sure we drive the right customer hmm. to use the, use the product. So everyone is aligned and the support team has to make sure that they really have the best service to the customer so customers stay with us. So every, every team is the why because we have a really clear goal. We want to hit a certain number at the end of the year. And that's our guiding principle. When you, or do you, I would guess you do, find that someone's still misaligned. Some, you know, you're meeting with them or department maybe even. It, it doesn't seem to understand the KPI or be making progress in a meaningful way. How do you approach that kind of a conversation where I thought I was pretty clear, but we still don't seem to be aligned? What happens? Yeah, now? I do. I do. I do. So um, one so one case was, um, you know, the one of the area, the manager, um, he was because we have to break down the goal to like each different my um, each different um, function. Right. Yep. So he was like, I don't think our function is, is actually for that type of, um, you know, a goal, right? We have to be look at, the, uh, be evaluated slightly differently, right? Okay. So I actually have to kind of, one is to continue communicating with him because I think obviously there's a dis disalignment and I have to bring past experience of me at a different company working at the same function. And then we actually look at, you know, the, the evaluation the same way, right? Is to drive more customer through this so-and-so function. And another thing is I also helping this manager to um, create a lot of initiative to help this manager to actually see his his work is actually driving more customer. Mm -hmm. So we we launch a lot of experimentation and he starts seeing that, you know, wow, you are right. Uh, you know, by doing something differently, we can actually change the game, change how we look at things. So it's not just me keep telling this person or take, you know, manager to do so and so. It's me jumping in to help. I love two things that really stick out to me. A, keeping the communication open. It's not always easy, especially when somebody is disagreeing or, you know, feeling out of alignment. So those are the folks usually that I don't want to talk to then. <laughs> uh, I think that's a great tip. And the other, the, the word that I have also personally found to be really a secret to easing tension is experiment, which is yeah. what you said, you know, Oh, let's just try it. You know, let's yeah. just try one little thing. Yep. It takes the tension away from doing something different to see, let's just see what happens. And then we can experiment other ways, you know, depending on what's going to go down. And a secret, another secret sauce is public acknowledgement, right? Hmm. Once you have some micro success, you, you kind of announce it. So make people feel good and they just want to do more. Um, as the leader, yeah. how do people make you feel good? Um, when I, so, <clears throat> I like to see them actually taking care of themselves first. What's the laugh? Why does that make you laugh? You know, thinking about other people making you feel good. Because I always motivate them to be active. 
<laughs> self care, staying active, uh, go out, take a walk, uh, have, have a jog, whatever, make you feel good. Uh, actually, that's the first thing I want. If they do that, that make me feel good. Mm. That's the number one priority. I ask them to do so. And if they do, they tell me, Annika, uh, because of you, I do this like 30 minutes of walking, whatever I make, I feel good. I feel so happy. I feel my job is half done. Yeah. 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 That's and great. then obviously, you know, I feel, I see that they pay attention to detail, right? That's also number one, because that's a, the one of value of the company detail matters. Right. And I'm also a very detailed person. So if I see that the, my my team do that that makes me happy yeah does it ever feel lonely to be a leader to you um uh, i would say yes and no i mean lonely because i cannot really um complain right because i don't want to show my negativity to my my manager and my direct report right but also, I would say no, because um, they also check in with me, like, hey, how are you doing, right? Like, they want to make sure that I'm also very fulfilled and very happy. So I know they care about me, and I don't really need to vent anything. <laughs> I yeah. just take it in a different way. Sports, go wrong or, like, bike like crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it, Annika. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we're approaching time, and there's been so many great nuggets of wisdom that you have shared. The question we always like to end on is yeah. kind of one piece of advice. Um, you've, you've dropped a lot of knowledge already, but reflecting back on this conversation, what piece of advice would you like to really stick here? The one advice I always like to give is seeking alignment. Because nothing will happen if um, disalignment happen within a team. So when I start anything, that's my number one thing to do is to align with the team, my boss. I think the, the interesting thing about that word in this conversation, it's a perfect summary in my mind, cool. because we started talking about your own personal alignment your yeah. alignment with what matters to you driving the decisions about what you're going to do with your life. Yeah. Seek alignment there. And then once you've made those decisions, get in, find alignment with your leadership, with your team. There's so much beauty about that word summarizing what we've talked about. So thank you, Annika. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I am sure that people will want to connect with you. Where can folks find you and what can we do for you? Um, the best way to find me is on LinkedIn. And what you can do for me to make me happy is to stay active. I love <laughs> you know, it. Go out for a walk, a jog. Um, you feel good. That makes me feel happy. Okay. We'll all send our messages of what physical activity we've done after listening to this episode. Yes. I love it. Well, I will put your contact all in the show notes. So that'll be easy for folks if they want to find you. Thank you again for making the time. Really inspiring conversation uh, and hope you have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and you have a great weekend too. Thanks, Annika. Bye. Bye.